Good day, students. Welcome to our lesson summary review for the course relating to Christ, John's Gospel. We're on lesson 10 this week, which will cover John chapter 18 and 19. You can see in your study guide that we're on page number 105. And we'll be going over this week's lesson review for those of you who are studying this particular course. Certainly pray that your uh, experience has been great thus far and that it will continue to be so. Now let's go ahead and touch on our lesson plan that you'll see outlined at the beginning of your lesson. The first part of our lesson plan is A, the arrest of Jesus. B, Peter denies Jesus twice. C, Jesus before Pilate. D, Jesus nailed to the cross. And E, the burial of Jesus. Now let's go ahead and touch on our lesson goals. Our first lesson goal is to explain how the arrest of Jesus shows that the forces of evil had no control over him. Second, we're going to discuss how Peter's denial is intrusive to believers. Third, we're going to state the results of Pilate's questioning of Jesus. Fourth, we will indicate the meaning and conflict of Jesus' title that was placed on the cross. And our fifth goal for this lesson is to describe the burial of Jesus. Now let's go ahead and get a start with our first part of our lesson uh, review, which is the arrest of Jesus. Our first goal want us to explain how the arrest of Jesus shows that the evil forces had no control over him. Now, if you haven't already done so, I want you to read John chapter 18, verses 1 through 11. And as you read through that section of scripture, you'll see that Judas led the soldiers to arrest Jesus. He had made the terrible decision to betray the Savior, not thinking Jesus would be crucified. When Judas saw the consequences, it was too late. His remorse was not repentance toward the Savior, but toward his deed. Now, during the time Judas spent with Jesus, he never believed or was touched by the mighty things he witnessed. He made the wrong choice for eternity. I'd like to draw your attention again to verses four through six, when Jesus said, I am he, the soldiers fell to the ground. They could not take him prisoner unless he allowed them. But Jesus did not try to escape. He knew it was God's plan for him to die for his sins. Jesus told the soldiers and those with him should be allowed to go free. For the soldiers were only looking for him. And even as he was about to die, he thought that his own should not have to suffer as he. We also see in this text of scripture that Peter was ready to fight for the Lord. In fact, he drew out his sword and cut off the ear of a servant of the high priest. The Gospel of Luke tells us that Jesus healed this man. And perhaps this was why the soldier did not punish Peter. Look at your life application questions for this section we just went over with you. If you haven't already done so, answer those life application questions. And you can check your answers with the self-test at the end of this chapter. Now, after the arrest of Jesus, we see that he was brought before Annas. And so if you read John chapter 18, now verses 12 to 14, you'll see that Annas and his son-in-law, Caiaphas, both held the office of high priest at different times. And they had plotted together to kill Jesus. They were accusing him of being a dangerous revolutionary leader. Caiaphas said that the Roman government would order the soldiers 
to kill all the people. Of course, this was not so. It was just the way that they could get the other religious leaders to give the death sentence to Jesus. And they did this in spite of the fact that they knew the miraculous works Jesus had done. We also see in this section of scripture that Caiaphas also said that it was better for one man to die instead of all the people. He did not realize his own declaration of a great prophetic truth about Jesus' death. Jesus was the sacrifice for our sins, and through his death, salvation is made available to every human being. Now, now you may wonder why Jesus could not save us without dying. We understand that God hates sin. So those who sin are separated from God. Sin brings death. And sin can only be appeased by a blood sacrifice. We see in the Old Testament that sheep, goat, cattle, were offered as sacrifices to take the place of the sinner. We signify the innocent dying for the guilty. We see in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22, it confirms, it says, In fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood, and without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. So in the Old Testament, these animal sacrifices had to be repeated again and again because they could not take away sin permanently. They were just a temporary arrangement until God sacrificed his own son for us. Jesus would give his blood for us. If anything else could have saved us, God would never have allowed his only son to die. Jesus, in this instance, was the innocent sacrifice who gave his life for guilty sinners. And this is why now each of us can be reconciled to God by embracing what Jesus did for us. Now you'll see your life application questions for this section that we just reviewed. I want you to pause the review and answer the life application questions and check them with the self-test at the end of this chapter and then we'll continue with our second part of our outline. Now our second outline for this lesson is Peter denies Jesus twice. And the goal of this section of our lesson is to discuss how Peter's denial is in instructive to believers. Now in this section, the lesson asks us to read John chapter 18, verses 15 through 18. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and do so now. We see in this section of scripture that the other disciple mentioned here was John, who wrote this gospel. He did not hide the fact that he was Jesus' disciple. But Peter, who thought he would be ready to defend Jesus, was afraid. And Peter denied Jesus. You see, students, it is easy to let people know you are a Christian when you are with other Christians. It is not so easy when all the people around you do not believe or know Jesus' teachings. Jesus said this in Matthew chapter 10, verses 32 to 33, where he stated, Whoever acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before men, I will disown him before my Father in heaven. Take time now to answer the life application question that you find at the end of this section in your study guide. Now, the next section of this lesson talks about the high priest questions Jesus. The lesson asks us to read John chapter 18, verses 19 through 24. 
And there we will see that Annas had held the office of high priest. So he called the high priest here, although Caiaphas held the position at the same time. Annas tried to swap Jesus, or trap Jesus, that is, into saying something that they could use against him at his trial. But Jesus would not answer his questions. So we see that the soldiers took Jesus to Caiaphas' house, where the religious court or Sanhedrin tried him there. Now, even according to Jewish law, this trial was illegal because it was held in secret at night and immediately after Jesus' arrest. There was no opportunity to call witnesses to speak in his defense. And most of the Sanhedrin had already decided that Jesus would be put to death. So they went through the form of a trial so they could turn him over to Pilate with an official accusation. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and answer the life application question for this section. Now, the next section of our lesson talks about Peter denies Jesus again. We previously talked about Peter denying Jesus. Now, here we see the second instance of Peter denying Jesus. Take a look at John chapter 18, verses 25 to 27. And we see in this portion of scripture that three times Peter was asked if he was a follower of Jesus. And three times Peter denied the Lord. Then a rooster crowed, just as Jesus had said. And when Jesus looked at him, Peter saw how he had failed his master. So he ran out crying, sorry for what he had done. Students, we should be careful not to judge Peter, who became the leader among the apostles. Through the denial, Jesus showed Peter how frail he was on his own. The same could be said of us if we do not focus on the Savior. Take time now to answer the life application question for this section. Our third lesson plan talks about Jesus before Pilate. So he's already went to the high priest. And now he's going before Pilate. So this third goal of our lesson is to state the results of Pilate's questioning of Jesus. Lesson asks us to read John chapter 18, verses 28 through 40, as well as John chapter 19, verses 1 through 16. Now in this portion of scripture, we see the Sanhedrin could not sentence anyone to death. So they sent Jesus to the Roman governor, Pilate. They accused Jesus of trying to set up his own kingdom. And in their law, this was treason, a crime punishable by death. We also see that Jesus did not defend himself against these false accusations. He told Pilate that he was a king whose kingdom did not belong to this world. You see, his kingdom is spiritual in the lives of those who believe in him. For the kingdom of God is within us. Take time now to answer the life application questions at the end of this section that you find in your study guide. Now we see the next part of our lesson talks about Jesus sentenced to death. In all the questioning, Pilate could not find any reason to condemn Jesus. And he told the people this, but they still shouted for Jesus to be crucified. So Pilate gave them a choice to allow Jesus a Barabbas, a robber, to be set free. And the people chose Barabbas. Now, answer the life application question for the section we just covered. So we see in this section of our lesson that Pilate wanted to set Jesus free. 
but he was afraid of the people. They were threatening to report him to the Roman emperor if he did not agree with them. His job and life would be in danger. He did not want to condemn an innocent person, but his own safety was more important to him. So Pilate finally turned Jesus over to be nailed to a cross like a criminal. Students listen. Like Pilate, everyone who hears the teachings of Jesus has to decide what to do with him. Some are afraid to believe in Jesus as Savior because of what other people will say or do. But our eternal destiny depends on what we do now with his Son, Jesus Christ. There are no choices without consequences. What is your own choice? What will you do with Jesus? Take the time now to answer life application question number 11. Our next section of our lesson plan talks about Jesus nailed to the cross. This fourth goal wants us to indicate the meaning and conflict of Jesus' title that was placed on the cross. Now this section of our lesson asks us to read John chapter 19, verses 16 through 27. We see in this portion of scripture that Jesus was crucified between two criminals, and a sign was placed over him which read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. The chief priest did not like that, but Pilate refused to have it changed. While Jesus was suffering on the cross, he thought of others rather than himself. He gave his mother into the care of the disciple John. And from other gospels, we learn that he even prayed for God to forgive the people who had nailed him to the cross. Take the time now to answer life application question number 12 that you find in your study guide. The next section of our lesson talks about the death of Jesus. It asks us to read John chapter 19 verses 28 through 30. And we see in this section that all the Old Testament prophecies about the Messiah's death for our sins were fulfilled when Jesus died on the cross. It happened exactly as the prophets had predicted hundreds of years before. Even the soldiers gambling for his clothes and offering sour wine to drink. So when Jesus cried, it is finished, in verse 30, he finished the work God had assigned him. His death paid for our salvation. The nations of the world could believe in Jesus, be free from the burden of sin, and have everlasting life. Indeed, it was for the sins of humanity throughout time that Jesus dies. We cannot blame the Jews, Pilate, or the soldiers who crucified him. It was sin that killed Jesus. It was our sin that inevitably made him go to the cross to save us. Knowing this, students, should make us contrite, repentant of our sins. We do not want to keep on doing things that cause Jesus' death. So we ask God to forgive our sins by believing and embracing what Jesus has done for us. We are saved. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24 affirms, He, being Christ himself, bore our sins in his body on the tree, which is the cross, so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. Take time now to answer life application question numbers 13, 14, 
and 15 that you find in your study guide. Next section, we see the prophecies fulfilled. Lesson asks us to read John chapter 19, verses 31 through 37. Here we understand that crucifixion was a slow, agonizing form of execution. The soldiers broke the legs of the victims to make them die sooner. In Jesus' case, the soldiers found him already dead, so they did not break his bones. And this was a fulfillment of prophecy, which is found in Psalm 34, verse 20. We also see that when the soldiers pierced Jesus' side, this was also the fulfillment of prophecy. Zechariah in the Old Testament, chapter 13, verse 1, records, On that day a fountain will be opened in the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to cleanse them from sin and impurity. Also, we find in 1 John chapter 1, verse 7, it says, The blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. Now take a look at life application question number 16 and answer that. Now the next section that we're looking at is the burial of Jesus. Our fifth goal is to describe the burial of Jesus' body. We read in John chapter 19 verses 38 through 42 that a man named Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, who were both prominent religious leaders and members of the Sanhedrin, these two men had not voted for the death of Jesus. Up until then, they had been secret believers in Jesus, afraid to come out openly for him. Students, we need to understand that to share our faith with others is not always easy. However, Jesus promised to be with us. He will give us the right measure of strength and confidence. When most needed, God gave Joseph and Nicodemus courage to ask for Jesus' body and to bury it, showing their respect and love for him. This also fulfilled another prophecy, that the Messiah would be with the rich in his death. We see that the burial custom there was to wrap the body with spices and place it in a cave dug out of the rocky hillside. And from the other Gospels, we learn that Jesus' body was buried in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. There was not enough time to finish all the preparations for burial because it was near night when Jesus died, and the Sabbath began at sundown. So the body of Jesus was put in the tomb without all the preparations for burial being finished. Take time now to answer your life application questions for this section. Questions 17, 18, and 19. I certainly hope that you have gained a lot about our Lord and Savior's final days in the earth and the sacrifice that he made for all of us during the review of this lesson. We've we reviewed... Lesson 10, John chapters 18 through 19. We talked about the arrest of Jesus, that Peter denies Jesus twice. We talked about Jesus before Pilate, Jesus nailed to the cross, and finally we talked about the burial of Jesus. I certainly pray that this lesson has been a blessing for each and every one of you, that it will strengthen your faith, bring you to a new or renewed appreciation for the sacrifice that Jesus Christ has made for each and every one of us. And we certainly are glad that he did. I look forward to continuing with you as we approach the next lesson of this course relating to Christ, John's Gospel. Until we get a chance to greet each other again, may God bless and prosper you always.
You have been listening to Grace Bible College and Seminary. We are blessed that you tuned in to our lesson today and look forward to connecting with you for more lessons in the future. Feel free to reach out to us for more information about our school and programs of study. Grace, Bible College and Seminary, an apostolic school of global mission. Where vision becomes mission, www.gbcs.education.